Good thing it's anonymous because the double blind review process relies on anonymity. So we can really evaluate this paper, uh, which is a very interesting paper at its merits without, you know, having a clue who would be writing something like this. Now, out of pure out of pure randomness, I just happen to have this in my like uh, control C, control V memory. I just pasted this here. I don't know why, but this is this other paper called Big Transfer uh, General Visual Representation Learning by Alexander Kolejnikov, Lucas Bayer, Xiaohua Chai, and others of Google Research. I've actually made a video about this. So if you're interested, totally ran not related at all. Um, I mean, yeah, so disregard the fact that the paper that we're discussing here uses a GFT 300M data set that is not available to the public, only to Google. That is, um, and actually this other paper also trains on that. Disregard that. Um, also largely disregard the fact that their model is called VIT, while the other paper's model is called BIT. Disregard the fact that they train on the exact same data sets, as you can see right here. I mean, this here is ImageNet, then C for 1000 pets, flowers, and the VTAB, VTAB, this visual task adaptation benchmark. I've done a video on that too, uh, by Google. <laughs> but they do have actually the ImageNet reel here, which is a just a set of new labels for ImageNet, which comes out of a paper by Google with largely the same authors as this paper. I mean, disregard the fact that the color scheme for the VTAB evaluation is exactly the same as is the histogram plotting. And of course, we don't even want to bicker about the plotting style with these uh, bubble sizes and so on. I mean, anyone could do this. Anyone, anyone in the world could just randomly have this much overlap um, with these models. And of course, anyone just has the money laying around to train on 2.5 thousand TPU V3 days. Um, and, you know, compare with 9.9 thousand TPU V3 days for the BIT. I guess you could just pick those numbers out of the paper. But what do I know? Um, so no, don't worry. Peer review is totally fine. Like, like, I mean, yeah. So I hope I've made my point. This is by these people. Um, and, you know, people say, you know, we need anonymous on, on archive because the danger is that people upload their paper on archive and then we can see who they are. I think this should prove to anyone that an anonymous archive is like, it's the crappiest. Why? Why? Like, why would you ever work against the core incentives of people? Like, clearly, these authors have an incentive to make known who they are. And clearly, we as readers have an incentive to figure it out. And to completely work against these incentives just seems so it seems dumb, it seems counterproductive, and it doesn't work, as you can see. What do you want to do? Standardize the plotting styles, standardize everything, um, standardize the citations. I mean, come on, here, you go like, when we compare, oh no, um, where is it? <laughs> when, the, when they compare against things, they say, oh, our first point of comparison our first point of comparison is the big trans randomly just big transfer by these authors that we have no relation to maybe or maybe not. Um, it's, it's ridiculous, you can't shield uh, this this fake anonymity. Um, this is actually counterproductive. And it only helps the big labs, um, the, the this anonymity criterion. All right, let's actually dive into the paper after this rant. Well, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Peer review, very pristine, very good, very anonymous, double blind for sure.